It's graphing. It's gra graphing time. It's time to graph. I'm y'all. It's graph. It's graph. time, y'all. So, hey, what do we do when we see a graph? Like, what's the thing? What, what do you think about? How do you approach it? Number one, ask yourself, what are the axes? Like, you know, what's the x-axis? What's the y-axis? Is What does it represent? This will tell you where you are. This will tell you your space. This will tell you the story, the relationship that you're interested in. And number two, number two, there's going to be some curves. There's going to be some lines on this graph. You need to identify what is going to shift these lines. When are we going to move them? When are we going to shift things around? Luckily for us, though, the answer to the second question is whatever's not on the axis. That's it. Like, if you get these two steps, then you're going to do great. Like, economics is totally doable. And honestly, this is, this is one of the most tricky things you're going to be dealing with the whole semester. But it's just two steps. You guys got this. So... The first model we're going to build together is going to help us answer big questions in the economy. How do we get long-run economic growth? Where does material prosperity come from? It helps us model this trade-off between doing one thing or doing another. We call it the production possibility frontier. Production is a word we all know. It just means making stuff like goods and services. Possibility is what is possible. And the word frontier just means line or boundary or a border. So the production possibility frontier simply tells us what is it possible for us to produce. Remember, we can't produce infinite things. We have to make a choice. We have to make a trade-off. This is the whole set of possible trade-offs. So here we've got our first graph. The axis on the vertical is the quantity of pizza produced. And on the horizontal, we have the quantity of salad, a full healthy diet in front of us. And then we have a downward sloping line. We've labeled the line the production possibility frontier line. And it's going to be a set of trade-offs. We can produce so much pizza or we could produce so much salad. If we spend all of our time and energy only producing pizza, which means we're not sending any workers or we're not using any of our buildings to make salad, the maximum amount of pizza we could produce is 30. Whereas if we spend all of our time and energy making salad and don't make any pizza, what an unfortunate world that would be, the maximum amount of salad would be 40. The dot A is one particular combination, 15 pizza and 20 salads and B is a different combination nine pizzas and 28 salads the dots C and D are interesting for dot D that's not possible we can't reach that level of production you can't have over 30 pizzas and almost 40 salads at the same time we just don't have enough productive capacity to build that and dot C is interesting because it means we're underperforming if you're creating nine pizzas and 20 salads we could increase the production of pizza without having to take any resources away from salad. Likewise, if we wanted to just produce nine pizzas, we can increase the production of salads without sacrificing anything from pizza. All points under the curve are feasible, but they're not efficient because we're not using all of our resources. All the points above the curve are not feasible. We simply don't have enough resources to get there. And every point along the curve is feasible and efficient. This trade-off can be seen in the slope of the production possibility line. This is the opportunity cost. If we're at point B making nine pizzas and 28 salads, the only way to make more pizza, the only possible way to make more pizza is if we devote less of our cooks in the salad production, take them away from that, and put them towards pizza production. How many pizzas do we have to give up in order to make one more salad? The slope is equal to rise over run. In this case, it's six over eight. We could reduce that down to three-fourths. To make one more salad, we must give up three-fourths of a pizza. But you know, I'm not quite satisfied. Can't it ever be possible that we get there? How do we get to point D? We need to change something. What limits our productive capacity? Number one, we could get more inputs we could get more workers we could get more machines we could grow more food and number two we can use our existing inputs the existing amount of labor and capital and machines more efficiently more productively we can increase our technology and our productivity to shift that curve out we need to change something in the economy that's not on this axis when we have more labor when we have more kitchens we can produce more food we can move from point a to point e more pizza more salad there are just two ways to grow your economy more inputs in this case it's more flowers more workers more kitchen space or better technology better ovens quicker workers better inventory software and that's it 
That's all there is to it uh, on why some countries are rich and some countries are poor. Well, now, how do we get more of those inputs? How do we adopt or create more technology? Uh, okay, we'll have to get to that in a later chapter. So to review, what are the axes of the production possibility frontier? We're going to have two goods. We can do two different things. We could either produce pizza or we could produce salad. We can expand this to be what you spend your time doing. Are you going to spend the next hour studying economics? Or are you going to spend the next hour studying calculus? In a whole country, are we going to spend more of our resources devoted to healthcare? Or are we going to spend more of our resources devoted to national defense? Are we going to spend more of our resources in investing education and increasing upward mobility? Or are we going to spend our resources on consumption desires? The axes of a production possibility frontier are going to be two different production choices. So when do we move along the curve? And when do we shift the curve? We move along the curve when we're interested in the opportunity cost of producing one good versus producing another. We're staying along that curve. We're going to shift that curve anytime something changes in the economy that's not just the choice of producing this versus producing that. Primarily in this context, it would be increasing productivity, increasing the technology, or just increasing the input. Getting more labor, getting more capital, getting more workers, or getting more machines. 